Hello everyone, how are you? I am Lucy, this is my YouTube channel and in this series of videos I will be teaching you how to make Instagram filters for beginners. In today's tutorial we will be making a basic face mask filter and we will be also adding the tap to change option, so let's start. First we need some face reference assets and you'll find this in the Spark website. As you can see, these are guides we use to make sure we put the images on the right place of the face. You can use any of these images and let's open one in Photoshop. First, we'll make the material, in this case the roses, the cherries and the butterflies. Adobe Photoshop is the software we'll use to make the image we need but you can use any image editor as long as it has layers to work with. You can google free software like Photoshop or something like that to find a similar program. Now we have to choose what image or images we will be using. You can create an image if you are an illustrator or you can pick one from the internet. So in google images I search for tattoo free vector and beware of not using images that belong to an artist or that have copyright. Pick one, it doesn't matter if you're going to use only one of the draws of the entire image and save it. Let's open the images, we save. Select the image you want using the market tool. I choose the rectangular shapes, but there are other shapes you can choose by clicking in this small arrow. Now drag the mouse in the area you want to select and then press Ctrl C to copy or go to edit copy. Now go to the document where our face reference asset is and paste it pressing Ctrl V or edit paste. With the move tool, move the flower or the image you, you chose to the place you want it to be. Make sure you are indeed selecting the layer where the image is and not another layer. With the magic wand tool, we are going to erase this white background. In this case, let's put 100 in tolerance. If part of your image gets erased along with the background, then you should put a lower number in tolerance and try again. Touch the white background and click delete in your keyboard. Now drag the layer onto that ink icon to duplicate it because in this case we'll be using uh, two flowers. If you want to make an icon with only one image, just skip this step. Let's move it with the move tool. You can also move the move the, the images with the arrows in the keyboard in the keyboard. Now to be organized, create a folder and drag these two layers onto the folder. Double click in the folder's name if you want to change it. If you touch this eye, you can hide the folder. And let's make the same process with the other image. Change this to point simple for more precision in the selection. And erase some of these butterflies because we're only going to use a few. I'm going to use the eraser tool and scale this. Now 
uh, go to move to click ctrl t and scale it while pressing shift to scale it uh, uniformly and thus on, don't mess up the shape touch the marquee tool and apply I'm going to choose a butterfly I want to use and press Ctrl X and Ctrl B or Edit Cut Edit Paste to paste it in a new layer independent of the other butterflies. Hide the other butterflies, scale it again after pressing Ctrl T. If you pause your mouse to a corner, you'll see a curved arrow and if you click there and move uh, you can rotate the image. Let's pick another butterfly and it doesn't matter if our selection touches the, the butterfly that is on the other layer because that's what uh, layers are for. Uh, nothing you do in this layer will affect the others. Let's paste it too. Holding shift, we select all the three layers and uh, then we click in the folder icon to make another folder and let's name it Battlefly. And now let's do the same with the cherry image. I'm going to paint the cherry, so pick a color, select the paint bucket tool and paint the cherries. Now duplicate the image Create a folder and name it Let's save the images to use them in a Spark First let's hide the face asset and the two other folders because we have to save each image 
separately. Make sure the background has these squares. This means the background is going to be transparent when we use it in Spark. So go to File, Save As, and choose PNG as format. And this is really important to have that transparent background. So save, OK, and now the same with the other image. Hi, the cherries. Let's make the layer with butterflies visible and save as PNG. Now I'm going to show you how to change the color of the roses in case you want to change the color of any image. Click in this icon that means adjustment layer and let's choose color balance or any tool you want to try. Adjustment layers are great because they change uh, in this case the color but in a different layer so if you don't like the outcome you just erase it without really compromising the image. Now move these parameters according to what you want to achieve and if you want to change something again just press in the adjustment layer and modify it. In Spark, first put your email and your Facebook password, not put the code that you got in your phone. And we're going to choose new project, blank project. Okay, so now we're going to look at the interface of Spark. And well, here we have the menu bar, which is pretty standard, like most programs it has a typical you know new new front template um open open recent and all this stuff here we have um the possibility to check for updates because spark gets updates pretty frequently because it's still in develop process here we can undo redo cut copy etc here um we have some of the same options that we also have in here, okay? Um, here, again, we can add material or objects, but we still can add from here. And here we have the project properties. Um, so when you're doing, when you're making a filter, you can choose whether you're going to make it for Instagram or Facebook um, and here and here depending of the type of filter that we build now we don't have anything basically but when we start building a, a filter if you use um, a face tracker here we have we will have face tracker you know uh, if we add um, an clouder we will have here the clouder or a hand tracker or anything like that and not all the capabilities are for all the devices and here this is important if you're working with textures like we're going to always choose maximum 100 okay that is important for every filter you make okay and here we can show or hide some things in the workspace here we can change the person from the simulator and sometimes I change the person if I am making a filter that I want to know how will how how it will look on different skin tones. So here we can pause the video. Here is pause. Here we can access to the library. In this case is Sketchfab and here we can download free 3D assets, also some music um patches here we can test the um, the filter and here you can test it in the spark uh, app 
on your phone. And here you can send it in this case to Instagram because in the properties I chose Instagram. So if you're making a filter with capabilities that your phone doesn't have and you send it to the Instagram camera, it probably won't work, but it will work on the app. So keep that in mind because sometimes we make filters, I mean, at first, sometimes we don't even know what capabilities our phone has. And here we can export and upload our filter. We will have the, the file size here because for Facebook, we have a limit of 10 megabytes and for Instagram, four. So then we have the assets panel and here we will import all the things that we want from computer or again from the library that I already told you about. And you can also not only import things from your computer or the library, but to make things like, for example, a material, you know? So the thing is, I'm going to stop this. Um, you make a material, but it's not going to show in the simulator. This is the simulator. This will be the screen of your phone to show it here you have to put it in the scene panel so the asset panel and the scene panel are not the same okay here we import things and here we will see the assets that will appear in our filter or that have anything to do with our filter when you open up a uh, spark you already have some assets and objects like the camera obviously and two lights and you go uh, delete this if you want to make a 2D filter because this is to make everything look more 3D looking. And here we have the microphone. Um, then here we have the inspector. The inspector is where we see the properties of the object that we are clicking, okay? And depending on the type of asset, obviously, is what we're going to see in here. So if I choose a material, I will see the type of shaders that I can make that material into, the color, the texture, and all that. But if I choose a light, I will be able to see the color of the light, whether that light is visible or not, the intensity, and all that. Um, here you will also have the, um, here for example, uh, you will have the possibility of changing the position or the scale of some objects. And you can also change the position here, the rotation here. So if you want to rotate something, okay. And, sorry, and the scale, if you want to make something bigger or smaller. And like I said, this is the simulator. This is the way that your filter will look on a screen. You can change it. I honestly never do. You can also rotate the device. And here you can also simulate, simulate touch. And this is something that we will use because we're going to test the tap to change. And this is the viewport. And this is where we will be able to see the things that are in our project. And with your mouse scroll, you can change the, the scale, the zoom, not the scale. And with your, this is my right click, okay? And the left click doesn't do anything. And this is my mouse scroll if I press it, okay? And this is if I move it. And that's uh, pretty much all then. Also, we have layers here. If you're making a, a basic filter, it really doesn't matter, but I will tell you that you can make different layers just like in Photoshop. And you can choose whether a layer is, you know, which layer is on top of which one. And then when you have an object, you can change the layer. So if you have an object that you want need to look um, on top of everything, you could make a new layer 
Oh, and also something else about the scene panel. Um, like you can see here, these two objects have a slight indentation on them, and that is because they are nested or parent with this focal instance. And if you want to unparent, you just move them, okay? So uh, when you have an object that you want to be parent or, or that you want to be, uh, you, or you want to make a children of another object, you just have to put it on top of that object. And, was, and what this will make is um, that this object will have some relation with this one. So for example, today in our filter, we will make, um, this is just to, to show you, but we will make a face tracker because we want to find a face, okay? And we will tell Spark that when a face is found, we want uh, something to appear in the face. So we'll add a face mesh. And like you can see, this is nested or parent. And that's pretty much all for the interface. And let's begin by importing the images we made in Photoshop. You can click here or here to import from your computer archives. Now we can see these images on the assets panel. And in project edit properties, we'll choose Instagram as our platform. And in compression, choose maximum 100. Select each image and choose no compression. Add object face tracker. A face tracking identifies and follows the shape and movement of the user's head and face. So when the camera identifies a face, the filter will appear uh, if you make a filter with a face tracker. And uh, now let's add a face mesh. You can right click in our face tracker and click add object. You can right click in a, our face tracker or click add object face mesh. I will suggest you use the right click method uh, because that way the face, the face mesh will be a child of the face mesh. Let's add three face meshes because we have three images, the roses, the cherries and the butterflies. Along with those three images, we'll be adding some retouching to the scheme, so we need another face mesh. To change the name of anything, just double left click. These face meshes look like this with these squares because they don't have any image in them yet. So for that, let's add a material to attach to those face meshes. And in texture, choose one of the images we already imported. And now we can choose that material we created for one of the face meshes. Another way of creating a material is face mesh we want to create a material to. And instead of choosing that material we already have, just choose create new material. Rename it. And you could press here to choose an image we didn't import yet, but because we already have the images, just press here. And the material is already in this face mesh because we created it with this other method. Let's do the same for the remaining materials.
uh, the higher the number, the stronger the retouching, so the softer the skin. According to the shader type we choose for each material is the way they are going to look like. For this type of effect, uh, face paint works great and that is what I ended up choosing at the end. Now for the tab to change, let's show the patch editor and drag the elements we need here to connect them. You can use the patch editor to add interactivity, logic and animation to your effect without needing to know how to write code. And as you can see, all the images are here, but we can see all of them because they are in the same place of the face, but that doesn't matter. If you like to change the place, you can move it here. If you want to rotate, if you want to scale, you can also change the properties in the inspector when an asset is selected. In the inspector, you can change which layer it's on, adjust whether it's visible in the effect or not, change its position, scale and rotation. In the patch editor, right click and a series of patches will appear. Search screen tab. This is a port and you connect this with other patch or object. The circles on the left are known as input port and on the right output port. If you drag this arrow, you can choose another patch that will be connected to the one we already create. We want a counter that will count how many screen taps we make and according to that, a different image will appear the roses, the cherries, or the butterflies. Now we need an equal exactly patch. If you add a patch that is not connected, just drag the arrow to connect. And now we need the images, so go to each face mesh and click in visible in this arrow. The patch that's been created can be used to control whether the, the images are visible in your effect or not. Patches created to represent object properties will always be at the end of the graph. They are always yellow. We need these three. Uh, not the retouching because we don't want to activate the retouched with the screen touch. We just want the retouching to appear always because we have three options. So one screen touch, two or three. And now let's simulate screen touch one, Two, three, okay, so here goes uh, four, no, three.
and let's test it in our device. This will send the effect to our uh, IG account to test it. Uh, no one is going to see this filter, it's just to test it. I'll show you how to blow the filters step by step in the last video of this series because uh, I don't want this video to be that long. Uh, so open your device, refresh, and here it is, tap here. Choose selfie camera, and here it is, uh, one, two, three taps, that's the filter. Okay, that was all for today's tutorial. If you have any doubt or any request for further tutorials, you can leave it up in the comment section. And if you want to try this filter, you can go to my Instagram account and try it out. Okay, so until next video, bye.